So, we need to address the elephant in the room. Well, maybe it's an ant in the room. Depend on how you look at it. Anyways, welcome to another episode of the UX Design Portfolio Series. In this video, I want to talk about the one thing that junior UX designers tend to overlook. One thing that kept them away from interning or working in big companies like Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook. And that is visual design. If you're confused why that is, or if you want to intern or work in those big companies, keep watching. I will walk you through the reasoning and give you some testimonies from people who are working in the industry. And of course, some very actionable items that you can start implementing right away. I know this intro is kind of long, so let's get started and roll the intro. everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. Today we're going to talk about visual design and why many many junior designers tend to overlook or underestimate it and why they shouldn't. If you don't, this video might not be the best video for you, you can check out other ones. If you do or if you're not sure if you do, put on your glasses, grab your notepad, get your coffee ready because the upcoming content is going to be very informative and perhaps, hopefully, eye-opening. I'm going to divide this video into two parts. Part one, what is the role of visual design in UX? Why does it even matter? Why is it even a focus? Why should you as a UX designer know about visual design or get good at it? Or why you should not overlook it? Part two is gonna be a fun one because I'm gonna list some actionable items that you can start nailing visual design right away. And bonus content. And that too. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Part one, why is visual design important? Why do we even have to talk about this? Why does it matter? Why do you even need to care about visual design that much in the realm of UX? Well, first thing first, let me be very assertive and definitive. I cannot stress this enough. Visual design is an integral part of UX, especially for junior UX designers. Repeat, visual design is an integral part of UX. If you being a UX designer, I know visual design is not your focus. I admit that and it's not, I totally agree. But that does not mean you can completely ignore it. Which means on the top of your UX design skills, mental model, empathy, users need, you need some time to acquire the visual design skill sets. But don't be sad or get frustrated because you're gonna like it if you actually like design. Because when you get there, you will realize, whoa, my eyes are really straight lines detector. Whoa, I didn't know I can see all those details. Whoa, my vision is beyond 2020. Whoa, you get the idea. Why is visual design so important to junior UX designers? When you apply to UX role, I can tell you, they are going to look at your visual design skills. And in fact, visual design is what they will first see in your portfolio. Visual design is everything that helped them form their first impression of you. When they open your portfolio, they, they can sense, they can perceive the overall look and feel, the quality of it, or the presentation styles and clarity as they scroll through your projects. Aside from first impression, craftsmanship, execution is what companies are looking for. It's what hiring managers are looking for when they are looking at junior UX designer applicants or fresh grad, new grads, or for even for interns. If they just want something functional purely, they can just let engineers run the show. Companies are looking for designers who can craft really nice, well, it doesn't have to be really nice, but at least decent visual design, good looking field, pass a certain bar so that they can hand off to engineers get them to build it and get it out the door, ship it to customers and users. The logic of it makes a lot of sense. If there's a company that cares about design, at least even a little bit, then they will hire designers to take control of the design, AKA the look and feel, so that their product looks good, so that customers will use it, they will fall in love with it, they will continue to use it. That means they will keep paying for the company, it generates revenue, it ties back to the business side of things. So it totally makes sense why they need to look for designers that have the craftsmanship skills, that have the execution skills. It doesn't matter if you're junior or senior. But if you are junior UX designer and you somehow just overlooked visual design or underestimated it, then you might just miss the opportunity. 
So when I was an intern at Google, I was talking to one of the industrial designers there. And then I was asking him, hey, what is the best advice you can give me as a student in grad school, doing designs, just starting their design career? And then he told me a story about a candidate that he interviewed in the past. So there's this candidate that I interviewed uh, in my past company. They were presenting a concept on some medical device. They can explain how things come together, how things fit, how to manufacture those very thoroughly, very incredible. But the aesthetic of the product is just not very good. We ended up passing on that candidate despite they are so great at the the engineering, the manufacturing, the, the component, and all those little details side about how things work internally. But at the same time, we are hiring an industrial designer, we're hiring a designer. We, they, we are expecting them to have the capability, the, the sense of eyes, the aesthetics, to really craft the, the product. What does it look, how does it feel, the color, material, finish, and all those aspects of it. So yeah, uh, focus on, or at least pay more attention to aesthetic and how things look and feel. So you can totally see how being able to know visual design or not can determine whether you can advance in an interview or will get passed on. Designers should have a good control of how things look and feel, especially when they're designing the products, so that we can really build an emotional bond between the, the consumer, the customers, the users, and the product. Yeah, so there's certainly a bar of visual design that you have to get past if you want to work in this exciting, fast-paced, world-changing companies in Silicon Valley. The tricky part is, in the hiring post, they don't really mention it. Let's take a look. So I have one from Google, hiring an interaction designer. Look at the minimum requirement, bachelor's, experience in collaborating, um, in multiple platforms, portfolio highlight projects. Okay, nothing mentioned about visual design. Prefer qualification, master, uh, ex relevant experiences, ability to lead and iterate products, uh, communication, excellent problem solving. Again, they did not mention anything about visual design. Let's look at another one. Amazon looking for UX designer. Do this, scroll, 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 basic qualification, okay, experience, portfolio, degree, uh, complex workflow, okay, best practice in information architecture as well, okay, Extraction user data, no, prototyping, okay, collaborative environment. If you consider presentation skills as visual design skills, then sure, they mentioned it, but it's quite a stretch. Yep, they did not mention it. But I can tell you for sure, I can guarantee you, visual design is one of their criteria, it's their requirement. So I've been wondering why they didn't put it out there if they're so important. I had two theories. Theory one, they think visual design is just so basic, so they just omit it. Theory two, they're evil and they intentionally hide it, which could be a valid conspiracy theory. Anyhow, either of those is an excuse to not get better at visual design. Again, I can tell you from the inside, in Silicon Valley, visual design matters. So if you understand or realize that it's important, but don't have the skill sets yet, don't get scared away, don't worry. It's very basic level of visual design. It's something that you can totally learn and master. And that is a perfect segue to part two because I have a list for you. So part two, what can you do? What are some of the very actionable things that you can do right now? There are just so many you can do, so many things you can check. I might actually need a separate video for this to include all of the things I can think of. But let's just go over a few today. Number one, you should use the right size of canvas. If you're using Sketch, what you design on is called an artboard. That's what I meant by canvas. So if you're designing for iPhone slash iOS, and let's say you're designing for iPhone 10 then you should use the right size of the artboard for iPhone 10, which is 375 by 612. If you're not sure, you can just even use a template that they offer. They can just set the right size for you if you use the right side panel. Next, use the right device mockup for the right platform. So in your design, if you're using 375 by 612, that is the screen size for iPhone 10, iPhone XR, I believe, iPhone XS, and iPhone 11 Pro. If you try to fit that into other devices like 12 or 12 Max or 10 Max, probably it's gonna be wrong. And you might need to stretch the UI a little bit to fit it. If you try to stretch anything, you're doing it wrong. 
And if you're designing for Android, there possibly be a bottom nav bar at the bottom that iOS does not have. And depending on which screen size that you design in, use the right phone for it when you present the UI whether it's gonna be the Google flagship phones or Samsung or some other brands. Next, use the official design mockup or design component or design system in your design. If you're designing for iOS, you should really go to apple.com, find their iOS kit, UI kit, so you can really use their native elements in the design so it looks real. Again, look and feel is important part of visual design. For example, the status bar, if you're designing for iOS, the status bar is gonna be the same. Same height, this is a fixed visual, no matter what app you design on because iOS will not let you change that. You can change all the content you want, but not the status bar. So the status bar has to be correct. How do you find the correct one? You download the official one from apple.com. Next, you can take a screenshot of a top-notch app design UI, overlay that on the top of your mockup to see if there anything misaligned, if anything looks right, icon size, the navigation bar height, the bottom left height. If there's some misalignment, probably your design is off or maybe yours is not off and you just came up with some new things. You should be able to do that with your eyes. If not, you have to train them to be able to see that, to see if things are dead centered. If not, you can just click on the element, hold down the Alt key and then hover your mouse to the artboard then you can see if they have the even margin on both sides. Next, double check to see if your icon have an even margin around it, not just on both sides, but around it. An icon tend to be surrounded by all elements. So make sure you have enough, but also even padding, even margin, even spacing around them so that they don't look too tight or too compressed. So those are a few things that are visual design related. If you miss any of those, that could be one of the reasons that you did not move to the next stage in an interview. In another world, Pixel Perfect is a must for designer, even if you are a UX designer. It might sound intimidating, but I guarantee you it's not. You just need to spend some time, train your eyes to look at those so you can fix it yourself as you are designing. So all these things that I just mentioned in Silicon Valley, these are not even considered as a visual designer's job. I mean, it is visual design, but it's so basic that it's just second nature. They don't explore much on these kind of spacing, margin, padding, alignment things. They play with more advanced things like font size, font weight, layout, color usage, and such. So what do you think? Does it make sense? Does it help? Does it give you an epiphany? Oh, I need to do this? If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. What I recommend is to just let us sink in and rewind if you need to. Honestly, I did not really care too much about visual design until my second year of industrial design study. That's why I took a summer program in Parsons in New York City to really learn and hone my craft in visual and graphic design. You don't really have to go through all the school for that, but just spend time, do the work, practice, get good at it. That's what school is anyway. Now, fun time, let's go through some shout outs to those who commented on my previous videos. First up, made by Mira. Oh, hello Mira, long time no see. Next, hello Calvin. I responded to you, so check your email on that. Hello Annie, yeah, thank you actually, thank you for bringing that uh, topic up. And lastly, hello Miranda. And I got your email, so I will look at it this weekend and give you feedback after. And now, bonus content time! Bonus content! I'm more than happy to give you some feedback on your UX design portfolio, but in this episode, since we talked about visual design, I will spend most of my attention and energy on the visual design aspect. So all you have to do is, one, smash the like button down below to help support me spending hours making this video. And two, let me know in the comment section down below that you have liked the video and then you can send your portfolio link to my email which you can find on the about page in my channel. Make sure to include your YouTube username so I know you have left a comment. And then I will take a look at your portfolio, give you some feedback on visual design and a shout out in the next video. Good luck to you all on your next portfolio iteration, future internships, and full-time jobs. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a small channel, so every like counts, and I will very much appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. 
doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!